Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Evil Walks Spiritual Talks. I'm your host, Sonona, and we are back, okay? But before we get started, I want to thank you guys for listening and tuning in. And I'd like to give a special shout out to the area of our most listens, and that is going to be, drumroll, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, shout out to y'all, and shout out to all the other areas um, that tune in and listen and have patience with my podcast, because I know I'd be sloganing out these episodes, but... I'm just trying to get my life together. You feel me? I'm just trying. I'm trying, okay? So, we're going to go ahead and jump into our episode. And for today's spiritual episode, we're going to take a quick uh, tarot card break and actually discuss uh, zodiac signs, but more so birth charts. So, um, yeah, we're going to discuss the planets and what um, that sign associated with that planet and your birth chart influences in your life. So, let's go ahead and get started, okay? Okay. So, our birth charts are our core. Um, They're who we are overall, and they tell us about things like our love lives and our dark side, and even our drive when it comes to life, you know? So, when you take a look at your charts, you may be surprised to learn that you aren't just one sign. Like, some of us may have, like, four or five signs, but then there's other people that have all 12 signs. And it's like, how is that even possible? So, um... And then, besides how is that even possible, who even came up with such a thing? Like, how dare you tell me that I got all 12 signs? No, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. That's it. That's it. But now, so the Babylonians, right, back in the uh, second millennium BC, although some resources say the third millennium BC, either way, back far AF, um, they actually started astrology to make predictions of events and seasons. So the the Nia child the natal chart i don't know where i'm getting neo from but the natal chart itself seems to have started in the sixth century um through like indian um chinese and western traditions but it came to america in 1840 through thomas hayes and it just went on from there okay so from there we're gonna go ahead and get into what is a zodiac So a zodiac is defined as um, being a diagram used by astrologers to represent the positions of the planets and the stars, sometimes being called astrological signs as well, which is referring to the 12 sectors that make up Earth's orbit around the sun. If you know, if you're into, if you're into science and space and all that stuff, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay. You know what I mean? So, um... The zodiac aspect refers to just one of those 12 constellations. Now, some say 13, but we're not going to take it there today, okay? We're not going to take it there. At least not this episode. But we will get into that 13th sign at some point because mm -hmm, 13, no, that means that you're taking me out of Capricorn territory. And you're not going to take me out of Capricorn territory, okay? Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. The 12 signs being Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn. Now, we all have a sign, which is our sun sign. Our sun sign is determined at birth, the moment we're born, meaning um, like the date, the time, and the place that we were born, okay? That that specific moment. So, um, some who don't know much about astrology... Um, they're, they'll only go off of their sun sign for everything. And they'll think that that's their full personality, which, um, actually makes most people feel as though they can't relate to their sun sign. But as I said earlier, that is not your only sign. Like, did you know that besides your sun sign, you also have a moon and a rising sign along with 12 planets and you also have 12 houses. But today's main focus won't be the houses. Um, It's just going to be our major three and our planets. So our major three is our sun, which is um, pretty much your personality, your drive, your attitude and your spirit. Um, It's your identity and what you represent or, or what you present to the world, right? But then you have your moon sign, which is more so who you are behind closed doors, um, your private self, your emotions, um, and even your anxieties. And after your moon sign comes your rising or ascending sign. Now, this sign is how you perceive things and can also uh, reflect how others see you. 
Now, the rising sign is supposed to actually be more significant than your sun sign. Um, it was actually pretty much the chart ruler for years, all the way up until about the 20th century. So you may think that people see you one way and they may call you that sign. And the answer to them may be, no, I'm not that sign. I'm this sign. But the sign that they guess, could it possibly be your rising sign? Because as I say, your rising sign is really your chart ruler. That's really supposed to be the one that matters the most. <laughs> people don't know that. People don't know that. So now, um, now that we're acquainted with, um, with you know, these three major signs of our birth chart, we're going to go ahead and um, discuss how my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. Shout out to elementary school because <laughs> I know some of y'all know that, okay? So our first planet is going to be Mercury, okay? This this sign that you have under Mercury is where you'll figure out how you learn and how you, um you know, deal with your curiosity. And it also deals in decision making and your sense of humor. And then there's also how you process uh, and absorb information, right? And then you have Venus. So um, our sign that's in Venus deals in love, sex, and romance, so I personally, um, in my opinion, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody else to go off of this, okay? But this is personally what I think. I wouldn't go off of what sign I'm compatible with when it comes to um, my love life. Now, the reason I say that is because, as I said, Venus deals in love, sex, and romance. So the sign that's in Venus, I feel as though is the sign that you should be looking for compatibility in, in my opinion, and just in my opinion, okay? Um, although it, it really doesn't matter for me because both my sun sign and my Venus sign is in Capricorn. So <laughs> either way, I'm in Capricorn. So, um, but yeah, as I said, it deals in love, sex, and romance. And I do feel like that's where you where you be more likely to get your compatibility from because me as a Capricorn, I may... Say my Venus was in, I don't know, uh, Gemini, right? And one of the signs that's supposed to be compatible with Gemini is Sagittarius. But I'm looking for everybody that's in my sun sign, which would be Capricorn, Taurus, Scorpio, um, Pisces, and Virgo. But <laughs> my love life isn't going as planned. Maybe it's because... My love life is supposed to be in Gemini and I should be looking for Sagittarius and Aries and uh, I believe a uh, Libra, you know, stuff like that. If y'all get what I'm saying, if y'all get what I'm saying. So let's move on. Let's move on. So <clears throat> then you have Earth. OK, and Earth um, isn't actually in a chart and there are many answers for why it's not in a chart. Um, but um, I feel like the most logical answer is that it's in the center of everything, you know, I feel like that's that's what makes it most logical. Even when you try to look it up to find out why Earth is not on your birth chart. Because there's so many people that don't uh, do in astrology, they don't care for astrology. You get a lot of very sarcastic answers. You know, you don't really get the real answer. But I feel like that's the answer that seems most logical. Okay. So <clears throat> after Mars... Um, um, after Mars, well, after Earth, you have Mars. And Mars determines your sexuality, sex drive, um, desires, anger, and aggression. Now, the sign that you are in these... Uh, it, what am I talking about? That's pretty much the uh, the sign that you are in Mars is, is who you are in these moments. You know, like I said, just sexuality, your drive, desires, anger, and aggression. So, um, the sign that you... that Why do I keep saying it? This is why I need my iPad. And not paper. So anyway, um, as I was going to say, for women, it can actually represent like um, the type of man that you're into. And for men, it can represent how you express your masculine qualities, right? Now, moving into Jupiter, um, we'd be looking at our views on wealth, prosperity, and good fortune. Now, uh, it also deals in who we are when we learn. Um, and that's that I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all right now. I'm getting super tongue tied because I can hear my son in the background. Just give me one second. So as I was saying, um, Jupiter, the sign that we have in Jupiter is who we are when we learn, you know, 
And then when you move into Saturn, Saturn deals in who we are when we're maturing and how we handle responsibilities, you know, pretty much how we adults. Um, it's also how you set your boundaries um, and face your fears. And it also deals within your values and ethics. Now, when you get to talking about Uranus, um, you get into who you are when you rebel. Um, it's that unpredictable side of you, um, the eccentric side of you, your individuality and your originality. Right. <laughs> and then um, then you have Neptune. Right. And that's where your compassion comes from, um, your talents and along with how you connect with your creativity. It's also how you deal in forgiveness and compassion when it comes to other people. And then our last planet being Pluto deals in how we view power, um, our dark, our darkest obsessions, jealousies and resentments. Now, those are our planets. And besides the planets, like when you get to the into your birth chart and you get under the planets, you'll also have something that says Lilith and Ennode. Now, um, Ennode is pretty much a lunar node that predicts your spirituality. Um, and what it is in your birth chart is what you will grow into, into, and, um, you know, your destiny. Now, Lilith, which is the dark moon, discusses your, uh, hidden knowledge and intuition, right? But because there are only nine planets, most people, well, because there are only the nine planets, most people don't look into the Lilith and the, um, North Node, but... I believe the North Node is important when it comes to trying to find compatibility for love and things like that, which is, you know, th that's that's at least what I read, what it's um, what it can indicate in your birth chart and such. And I don't think uh, people know that. So, you know, your North Node can be important. too. your North Node is important too. Lilith is important, too. And with all of that. Uh. With that why do i keep getting sunside i'm cracking up um with all of that when you go to go in and check out your birth chart all of these signs make up who you are individually now you may wonder as if as this, the same as i wonder um if it's at all possible to have an identical birth chart with somebody else now it looks possible but not completely to a t and the reason I said this is because I had the perfect experiment, y'all. The perfect experiment, okay? I have identical twins, okay? Mm -hmm. And they were born three minutes apart. Now, their birth chart is identical. Identical. Except for the measurements. Now, um, the measurements are definitely off uh, just by a little bit, though. Like, it's not major changes, but it's definitely off by a little bit. So... I don't think it's possible to have it completely to a T, but it is possible to have identical birth charts. But as I said, the, the measurements could be off. So not to a T, not to a T, okay? <laughs> so yeah, I just kind of wanted to add that part in because if you're similar to me, um, your mind will kind of wonder a hundred different things and ask a hundred different questions on a certain subject as well. So I did want to put that in just in case anybody was wondering if it was possible because... <laughs> I did wonder. That's why I put that in here. <laughs> so with all that being said, we've come to the end of our episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. Um, invite you to join the uh, my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all called Evil Walk Spiritual Talks. As you can hear my son in the background, that's why I've been getting tongue-tied. Uh, <laughs> um, but as I was saying, thank you for coming and listening to Evil Walk Spiritual Talks. Um, and please follow the Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all of the same name. And I will catch you on the next episode. Okay? <laughs> Bye.